Hey guys, it's Michael Todd and welcome to the Cult of Vintage. Today, it's all of the things that you didn't see. We're going to dive into all of the purchases that I have made. We are obviously not out doing a shop with me video. Um, I have gotten to, I, I have to say that I have so enjoyed doing more of like a haul video than a shop with me video because I feel like it's so much more relaxed. I feel like we can talk about the items a little bit better. Um, so let's get into it. Here we go. Okay, so this is kind of what we are looking at with regards to what I bought that you didn't see. We even have a quick, oop, quick flash there of a super stellar item. So let's get into these boxes and a bags. See what we got. Here we go. Alrighty. Ooh, we can see that little. We don't like that. We want this. There we go. It's nice and clean. All right, let's start off with some ephemera first shall we okay let's do it all right i bought um four of these postcards and oh, y'all i think they're so beautiful they are in a series um i'm gonna go ahead and probably well i can take them out of the plastic sleeve but none of them have any signatures there's no postmarks on any of them um, here of course we do have our back so you can see a variety of different languages here uh, i want to thank ashley the moody mommy um, she is a vamp seller this line here is in an indication that the postcard was created after 1907 um, I thought that was an incredibly powerful piece of information. So I do want to thank Ashley and relay that little information, especially if you don't have a postmark on it. <gasps> Look at her and her gold embossed beautifulness. Isn't she lovely? Now, like I said, it is one of a series of four postcards that I have gorgeous luster uh the artistry behind it she's clearly in like an art nouveau almost like a greek revival um feel to her so far as her very silk like clothing there that is one um we've got number two as i said they're all in these plastic sleeves Look at her. Do you see like the addition of the purple? I love that accent to it. Oh my goodness. She is giving like Grecian vibes though, right? So there are our first two postcards. Am I in frame? Maybe. Okay. Let's check out number three and four. Just as beautiful to be honest with you. Now, this one does have a little ding down here in the corner. You can see I'm not fussed with it. Look at her giving us Venus vibes. Look, Venus is sailing to the shore, okay? She is on her way to the shore with the help of a little Cupid down here. You know, you see her shell. She had to get to the shore somehow, gosh darn it. So that was three and then four. Fourth, last but definitely not least, is our lady here. Um, she's giving almost like a Native American vibe, an indigenous vibe to her with her little fishing skills there. Obviously, she just has like a skirt or dress here with no top. She's out there in the reeds with the cattail. She's got a little lotus down here, but again, with the purple don't know that I really mentioned it, but here we have a little bit of a contrast color. And again, that second one and our first one, you know, in the appropriate light, I don't, you see how it's more golden up here versus down here. It's a little bit more green. So there are our four postcards. I love ephemera. Okay, so up next, this item I didn't necessarily get for a resale, but I did get it to help with the business. And it is one of the black velvet necklace holders 
We're going to use this bad boy here in a little bit uh, because we did get some jewelry and I really do want to, whether it's a display, whether it's taking a photo, whether it's showing it, I think this, that black velvet, it really helps any color uh, kind of jump out at you. Of course, black might be a little tricky, but I did get this one. So again, more of a tool than anything else. And we're going to jump back into glass. And yes, we are going to do a piece of Fenton here. Um, this one is stamped, again, knowing that it's 1971 or later. I do believe this one is from the 80s. It is from the 80s. I don't know that I'm going to be able to get that number to shot, uh, show. Um, but sometimes, not all of the times, underneath the Fenton um, hallmark there, there is a, a number eight, nine, eighties, nineties. Um, you know, it's an absolutely beautiful, almost a periwinkle blue, no chips or cracks to it. I love these smaller swung vases, especially the ones with the pattern. Um, they're great for small spaces. Um, it's a great collection where if you love the swung vases, but you just don't have the room, check out these smaller ones. They come from a variety of different glass manufacturers, patterns, no patterns. Um, you know, your big ones of the time, of course, Viking and Ellie Smith did, of course, create their smaller swung vases. And even if you are a fan of the larger ones, as I have said before, adding in different heights of, of a variety of different heights, I think adds um, a lot of visual appeal to it. So I love this color. But again, that one is Fenton. Alrighty, so up next, we do have some more glass. This is dun, 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 amber glass. Now look, amber glass, love it, hate it. Maybe you're a little indifferent to it, but for me, Amber glass is one of my favorites. The reason that it's one of my favorites is because my personal preference so far as home decor colors are in earth tones and it can be difficult to get something sparkly in an earth tone and I think quite frankly amber glass is the way to go. Um, a lot of people see it and they will immediately, the nostalgia is kicking into childhood 60s, 70s, and that is certainly true. Um, you know, there is a, a huge surge in popularity to mid 60s to, you know, I would say late seven, mid 60s, late 70s for that very mid century look, that very mod look. And obviously, amber glass is certainly going to do that. Um, however, I think that in more of a traditional or antique decor home, amber glass is a welcome addition. It is warm. It has a beautiful shine to it, but it doesn't jump out at you, so it's not very jarring. We do, of course, have a two-piece candy dish here. The shape of it is giving us Art Deco vibes. What I think emphasizes the Art Deco, depending, of course, on uh, your frame, a reference is the etching that is happening. So we do have a floral motif coming through there. It is etched into the glass. I think that if you are a mid-century lover, you could certainly add that into your home decor and it would be a welcome addition. But if you do have like some books, especially some antique books, and you kind of want to break up um, the books, add in some amber glass. It is a beautiful color and it doesn't fight a, a lot. Now, I have a couple of different pieces here that I think we're going to go ahead and use it with just so that you can kind of see maybe a little bit of the vibe that you could pick up with it. Um, it's a little mid-century. It's got a, a little bit of a mid-century vibe to it. You're going to have to pardon me because I'm doing this on the top of a box. We're just improvising. Um, but I'm also adding it in with some antique brass. So you can see with the three pieces there, I think that's a gorgeous look. Again, very earth toned like, right? Now, the candy dish is the only piece that I picked up. I do happen to have the other two pieces, but I think that's a gorgeous combination. Very warm, very welcoming. It's very relaxing to me. 
Okay, another beautiful piece of glass, but this one is in fact antique. It is in our French opalescent. Now, a lot of people would see this and immediately think Fenton, I would be included in that group. Uh, however, this one is actually from Hobbs Glass. Uh, it is an older glass manufacturer. You can see, again, it's clear glass with that uh, white opalescence to it. Um, the opalescence is very controlled in the hobnails, creating a moonstone effect. We do, of course, see the opalescence running around the rim here. I think it's simple. It's elegant. Uh, again, a very traditional piece. It is four inches tall and the diameter on that is eight and a half inches. So again, definitely a sizable piece, uh, but not very overwhelming. This would be beautiful for a very elevated tablescape. Maybe you do your florals, short stem florals in here. The utilization of maybe a metal flower frog, even just floral foam. Um, you know, the floral foam would be covered up, of course, by the stems, but how absolutely gorgeous is that? You could certainly use it for something like a catch-all, you know, your tape measure, your rubber bands, maybe your scissors, your UV flashlight. I mean, if you're going to put stuff in something, you can make it fancy, right? I love this one. Um, but again, opalescence, it is one of my most favorite glasses. Now, something to keep in mind, uh, even with your clear glass, is that if you do have your UV light out and about with you, not just green glows, but sometimes your old clear glass will glow. I'm going to put this down in the shadows to see if we do get any fluoresce. There is no fluoresce. Um, you know, the uranium in antique that would have been added wouldn't have been used as like a colorant so far as like green uranium or Vaseline glass. The uranium would have been used in trace amounts to actually help keep the glass clear. It was a clarifier, um, but there is none in there. Like I said, it's trace amounts, so it's not going to like burst out um, uranium green. It has a subtle hue to it, and that just helps us kind of date the piece, or better, helps us date the piece in doubt. Love it. Okay, so moving on, we've got this brown bag. I'm gonna go ahead and unwrap everything that's in this brown bag, um, cause I'm excited to show it to you. Here we go. It's glass. It is this. Just super hits the nostalgia points. For me, it immediately takes me back to childhood, specifically my grandmother's um, curio cabinet in the dining room. She had a glass front cabinet filled with this particular kind of glass from a very specific company, um, and it is a Fenton. Y'all, we've got a three-piece set here. Look at that. We've got the horned cornucopia, our piece at the bottom. We've got a medium-sized rose bowl and, of course, a small rose bowl. Now, obviously, I have them stacked up here, um, which is quite stable, I will say that. Uh, you have not just the one, but boys and girls, I was actually able to get two sets of the same. I love it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put those on very carefully. <laughs> uh, but let's take a closer look at them. So each of the pieces I show you, obviously we have two of them. Now, none of the pieces are marked Fenton, so it very well could be the 1950s Fenton milk glass, though it could be from the 60s. Um, but again, this is our horned cornucopia. We again have our medium sized rose bowl, which really needs cleaned out. And then again, our small. Now, look, I know some people are like, it's milk glass, it's so common. And it is, you know, there's no denying that fact. But I will say this, I've said it during live sales, I'm telling you, milk glass is making a comeback. Not an opinion, but an observation. The collections that I am seeing of a variety of different manufacturers of milk glass, 
the different shapes of milk glass, even though some of the shapes may be a little bit more common than others, it has got such beautiful visual appeal to it. It's very dynamic. It's kind of like the new Ironstone. If you remember the, the white pottery, the white on white on white, I think that there really is something to be said for it, but folks seem to be switching over to the milk glass. This goes great with your iron stone also, so don't pass it up. Think about it. It is a great complement to just about any color. It's a year-round piece, whether you want to do it in the fall, you want to do it in the winter, the spring, the summer patriotic displays. It's got such great versatility that it's not just a one and done. And also something that it goes great with, aside from colors, is we're going to pull it back out. We're going to pull out back out that amber glass. It gives you a very bohemian like look, especially with the addition, of course, of brass items. So don't pass up the milk glass just because it's milk glass. Try it out. I'm telling you great versatility and you can find it relatively inexpensive too added bonus i like so inexpensive that i got three of the pieces for eight dollars and quite frankly the ability to sell all three is where i really see the value in this because yes these shapes are a little bit more common but it's an instant doesn't it look like an ice cream cone <laughs> i love it uh, but that's got some great visual appeal to it. I really like it. All right, let's mix it up from the glass and let's go to, ooh, this one still has got its plastic little thinger on there for the price tag. I'm going to snip that off quick. We're going to jump into some mid-century pottery. Um, I don't know what has been with me of late, but I've really been obsessed with the birds. And here's a little secret. Birds typically like, ooh, like their feet. I don't like their feet. Like, eesh. But this one I really like. The budgies, the parrots. This one is from Royal Copley. Now, we do have the remnants of a sticker here. Obviously, about a quarter of it is missing here on this corner. Um, but overall, look at that. I love the simplicity of the sculpt. Um, the airbrushed glaze on that one. There's no chips. There's no cracks to it. He goes great. Again, we're going to do it again uh, with the amber glass, right? You could certainly mix him up with some brighter colors. Um, he's just got great character to him, some fun personality. Doesn't he look like he's smiling a little bit, especially from this profile? I think he's really cute. Gosh darn it. The thing that kills me was I'm recording this is literally right here is the timer. <laughs> like it's out of frame. No, it's not. It's just being blocked by the timer. But any old how, I think he's great. He's a beautiful figural piece. It's a semi-soft sculpt. In other words, it's not super detailed, uh, which I do have a tendency to prefer over very finely or intricately sculpted pieces, especially in pottery. There's, of course, exceptions to every rule, um, but I like them with a little bit more of a soft sculpt. The airbrush brush glaze, glaze is second only to me into a very watery glaze. Think like a Weller, where it looks like somebody watercolored it on there. I love the soft ombres that can be created um, through the airbrush. So again, it's about the paint application, um, and I love that minty green color on him. Let's keep him on screen, and I know y'all are like, don't pull out that amber glass again. I don't think we're going to. There's no promise on that. Maybe you like colors that are a little bit more vibrant. This little parrot, I think, would go great with some amethyst as a contrast. That green and purple, um, I really like it. It's visually, oh goodness, Michael. It is visually appealing. I like the mixing of the pottery with the glass. So the next item, obviously, that we are showing is this beautiful amethyst apothecary jar. This is from Empoli. A little bit more desirable on this piece. Is there something in there? Oh, it actually is. It is a little inclusion. A piece of soot is in there, so there is no getting that one out. I don't know that... Yeah, there's no way I'm going to be able to get my hand down in there to... I'm not going to trap my hand in there. There's no chips or cracks on it. It's a gorgeous piece of mid-century glass. 
whether you would choose to put something in here, house it, maybe it's candy, maybe you have an apothecary vibe, um, that would be a welcome addition in there. I think for me, if I were to put anything in there, I would keep it super simple and do maybe like a clear marble. Um, obviously the color, if you were to put color in there, is going to be a little distorted uh, with the amethyst glass, but isn't that a beaut? It's a beaut. I really like that one. And we're going to do one more piece of glass. This one, it is so darling. It is another Fenton piece. Um, maybe kind of see the hallmark, as is with a lot of Fenton pieces. The mark gets very muddled. It's difficult to see. Sometimes you can barely see it at all, and it almost just looks like, like a little wave in the glass. This is going to be really interesting to show with the wall color, but it is our little ginger jar. I love like these apothecary styles, like, oh, I love the different shapes, the different colors that you can get on it. It's got like a clam broth vibe to it. They're, this tone is a little bit more of a yellow undertone, whereas like our clam broth gives us a little bit more of a white vibe to it. Somebody's peeking on me. <laughs> okay, our next item, I'm throwing you a curveball. This is a different kind of uh, nostalgia, but definitely one from childhood. That's right, boys and girls. It is the one, the only Battle Cat. Yes! His saddle's a little weird right now. We got to get that. They didn't put it on right. Um, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> His helmet's all kinds of weird, but it is a complete He-Man, Masters of the Universe. It is Battle Cat, of course. It is He-Man's trusted steed. He is the green and yellow striped tiger because, of course, in the world of fantasy, why not? What's going on here? I don't remember that piece. Okay, there. There he is without his his little harness. He's in really good condition, y'all. He is dated 1981 OG. This is first run Battle Cat then. I was three years old. I remember the Christmas um, that He-Man came out and my mom got me Castle Grayskull. I was horrified by the box art. It's, of course, this very foreboding Skull Castle. And I was just like, no. So very pleased to add this into my personal collection. Listen, you got to know your toys in today's market. If there is one um, area or one genre of vintage antique that you should know, it is your toys. I have found it to be one of the most recession-proof markets out there. That's a tip for you, but you got to know your stuff. Just like with all vintage and antiques, just because it's vintage and antique doesn't make it valuable. To me, the value is the memory in here, though I will say Battle Cat in this condition, OG, he's worth a, a few pennies. He's worth a few pennies, but he's going to go on my display shelf. With He-Man, of course. I have the power. That's actually how he should look. So we got him reassembled. I had to show. All right, so up next, is it giving you chill bumps or are you just annoyed with it? <laughs> it is another one of the vintage sewing notions, tools, fabric, patterns, transfers, there's a sock darner in here. I know there is a pair of vintage pinking shears. Um, and again, you know, it just goes to prove. I've had these a couple of times in the past. It's getting really limited supply PSA. Um, it was totally unexpected, the popularity or demand on these particular bags. Um, they are all have quality items in them. Oh, there's the handle. Oh, there's the tips. 
have the pinking shears, crochet needles, the tape measure. Um, what is that? A belt and buckle set is in there. You've got zippers, bias tape, spools of thread, even the beads. Um, but again, it just goes to prove that, you know, the quality of vintage items was a little bit more superior than to a lot of the things that we buy in today's market. Um, so there definitely has been a demand on those things. It's a great value. So I'm looking forward to bringing one of these again for sale. So um, I look at these buttons, those lustery buttons in there. So lustery. Okay, let's see what else we've got. Another thing that uh, uh, some people have demonstrated an interest in are the vintage recipes. This one's really cool. It's just kind of tied here so you can hang it on like a little hook or something like that. Um, a little bit larger than traditional recipe cards, but it is a Pennsylvania Dutch uh, recipe booklet. It's in really good condition. I don't think I have a specific date. It very much looks like it's from the 70s or early 80s, just judging on the graphic as well as the color saturation. Um, but we've got Schnitzel und Kempt, no clue. Sour Braten, Pork and Kraut, very classic Pennsylvania Dutch recipes. We've got Dutch meat rolls, liver noodles, why not? Sausage patties, chicken pot pie, chicken France, Frances, so a lot of very good traditional um, recipes are in here. York County chicken corn soup, egg balls, egg balls for soup, bread and butter pickles, including the process of those. So a lot of the food, I think, and the taste that a lot of people grew up with. And, you know, it just the mental nostalgia, but having the smells and the taste of your childhood is a very powerful thing and you know for a lot of people those recipes get lost um, you know people move or pass away so I think this is really cool sweet rolls Dutch sticky buns bacon muffins huckleberry muffins come on now what's better than that you know what's better than that how about some vintage office supplies or night lights are you ready for it a look at this day glow lion it's one of those 60s 70s composite things very mod of course in the color you know he will super fluoresce he's very neon but you know what he is it's a stapler it's a stapler i mean if you got to be at work all day then you may as well have fun with it right and you know what goes really well with this little lion head stapler how about our little Lucite Owl? Y'all, do you know what he is? Can you guess what this Lucite Owl is? You see these a lot of times, this particular kind of one shape design, um, and they are napkin holders. He is not a napkin holder. Oh no, boys and girls. He is in fact a nightlight that works. His tummy, it's just a very soft, warm uh, glow to it. It's not super bright. But again, in a hallway or something like that, it really would kind of help you not trip or fall. So I just, I love him. I had to get him. I've never seen one. And the added bonus, again, he works. I think you can unscrew the back to change the light bulb. I'm not gonna muss with it because I don't want to damage it, but there's the back. I did test it, so I do know he works. It's so cute. Now next up, you know that I love some tiny treasures and I love the dolls and this was super cute. So I did get it in the baggie. I'm going to show you the entire baggie, but we've got this bridal party here of bisque dolls. The bride is here. We've got our maid of honors, but yet our groom is like a celluloid doll. So he's a little bit different than the others and that's okay. Look at there's the little groom looking a little suspicious. The suit is a little big for you. You know, here is a bridesmaid in her yellow, or her yellow, her blue satin. You know, she was stitched in there. It does look, appear to be like a Japan bisque doll, but I just thought the fact that it was a whole wedding party was pretty cool. We've got this one. Oh, look, she's got some little 
Oh, okay. So we've got one in a pink. She has, it looks like they all have their little hair nets, but the glue more than likely just dried off and has fallen off, but it is still included, which is nice. So we have two blues, two pinks, and then of course our star of the show, our lady in white, look at her. She of course does have her little veil, little netting. Now some of them do have little pieces of wood on the bottom. Um, it seems that one pink and one blue are missing that. Obviously it was meant to kind of help keep them uh, standing up. I wonder if this wasn't used when it was new um, on a wedding cake or sometime some type of a party favor. So I was really excited to get those. I think that they're absolutely darling um, and it's it's unique. There's a story there. I wish I could say specifically what the story was, but I really enjoyed finding that whole bridal party. And now up next, some playing cards. It's in a different language. It seems to be like German. We do have the partial remnants of, of what I believe would have been the original packaging. It is uh, a paper, so it's, you know, it's definitely tattered. Um, it seems to be, I would say, like 98% present, um, but it has clearly fallen apart, but I'm glad it's still there. Now, the artistry on these, I love the illustrations. Check that out. And then we've got like different scenes going through the cards. They all seem to be kind of courting a little bit on like, almost like Indianish, if you will. This one seems to be, actually, I think they're all a little bit foreign. So you've got a variety of different nationalities here. All seem to be courting scenes though, which is really interesting. Um, let's skip past those. And then we get into kind of like the suits cards, which again, the illustrations, look at that. Look at her. And on his shield is also this name appears on the packaging. Their casino Tarok, it says. And you've got you know, your traditional cards here. We get back into the suits cards. Again, a variety of different images. I love the colors, the artistry on them. We've got some more royal suits here, the hearts. And we've got diamonds. I think that's about it. I think there is, there's this random card here whatever that says. Just a plain striped background, but I love these. Fascinated with them, whether you play with them, whether they would be framed to prop them up in Metal Flower Frog. I think that would be super fun. Personally, I would maybe like frame them. I don't know how many cards are in the full deck. It doesn't seem to say 54. Let's find out if they're all there. Well, I actually counted 55 cards, but one of them being kind of like that in the uh, manufacturer card, this one here. So it does appear that the deck is complete. Maybe you know what game this is. I'm unsure, but I think they're pretty cool. Oh, looky here, we've got some more milk glass. It is, of course, the Fenton milk glass, the smaller um, swung vase with the little pedestal on it. As I said earlier with, you know, our blue Fenton one, which these two go really well together, you can get a really dynamic swung vase collection without, again, taking up a lot of room on that one. Milk glass is, is when it's come back. Um, let's do a little antique here, uh, more than likely German or Austrian here. Uh, we do have a Majolica glazed little small bud vase. Um, there's no chips or cracks on it, which is pretty phenomenal. 
a more simple floral motif on the back. Um, it is, it's got like its mold or serial number here, but we don't have, which is pretty common for these pieces, we don't have a specific studio uh, that made them. But I love that burgundy. You know, let's pull that out with that amethyst. If you love all of the different colors on that, some people prefer having more of like a rainbow collection. Maybe you want to kind of mute it down a little bit and add it with the amber. Either I think is a great look, but more than likely mid late 1800s on this piece. I have a couple of these in my personal collection. There's just something about them. The color saturation, again, created through that majolica glaze or a lead based glaze, which gives you a far more dense, rich uh, color look to it. So pleased with that one for sure. All right, we're gonna throw you another curve ball. Now, this one is made in occupied Japan. Okay. Um, this particular one, it's really interesting because I've had one of these figurines before. This one is a planter. He's riding his little lotus flower. We've got our anthropomorphic frog kind of pixie. Um, they do make these in a pixie in a variety of different colors. The ones that are a little bit harder to get, of course, are the frogs here. He does have his ruffled collar. There are some areas of condition um, with regards to chipping of his collar. It's not unheard of. It's a very thin piece of ceramic here. Uh, it happens with age from the 40s. So he's 60, 80. He's 80 plus years old. I think we can forgive that. But overall, condition's really good. And I just love kind of like an off putting, a little unsettling kind of subject matter to him. Those eyes. Give me your flowers. All right, we're going to jump back into the Fenton realm with our French opalescent. We have two pieces, different shapes, the same collection. It's our wild strawberry here. Again, a smaller pedestal swung vase, hand painted here. They are stamped Fenton. We do have the uh, Fenton artisan signatures on the bottom of those. I know they're not coming in across the clearest, the white. Um, oof. Hand painted by D. Bunner. Bummer. <laughs> Hand painted by Lisa C. Lisa C on our pedestal. Very traditional. Again, super nostalgic on that. And again, French opalescent with same subject matter, but painted by two different artisans. Um, I would say Miss Lisa, she liked a denser paint application, where our bunner, you can see it's a little bit more translucent with the, um, the brush strokes kind of showing through, but equally beautiful, gosh darn it, and goes great with the milk glass, goes great with our earlier Hobbes piece, so you can mix those up. <clears throat> um, let's do something that's fun and quality. I love this. There's a variety of different colors and shapes and functionalities behind these pieces. I cannot believe that I was able to get this particular one, um, especially because we're kind of creating a little bit of a look here. So she blends in perfectly with it. Now, oh, look at her, that composite material. She does have like some decals, butterflies, flowers, you know, they're in opposition to one another. So she obviously has her old stick pins, her straight pins down here, which thou, those by themselves, um, some good values. I've seen a lot of folks use smaller pieces, um, like a lot of the, the, uh, the shoes. I think that it's really fun to see those stick pins in there. Um, she is also a bank. Now she is missing her stopper, but that's okay. Uh, you could get one of those replacements easily kind of on Amazon or probably eBay, but the paint application is really good. And again, kind of mixing her with different eras, you know, the vibe is still the same on that. So I'm really enjoying her. She's got a great look to her. I love the blue eyeshadow on her. Again, those stick pins, I'm all about that. 
All right, let's jump back to the 20s and 30s in that great Art Deco era. We've got two Czechoslovakian pieces, traditional stamp there, right? We have both a blue luster bud vase, great, simple, clean lines. Again, very Art Deco, fully glazed on the interior, but I would say that it looks like they've been used at some point. However, there's no chips or cracks on either of them. Uh, and we do have our yellow one here, again, trimmed in that black. So you kind of get a twofer on that one, more yellow, or with that bumblebee vibe going on to it. I think that's a great instant collection if you were go to go for both. But I love the simplicity of these, and it's all about the lines. I don't know, yeah, you can kind of see the lusters a little bit denser in some areas, which I think creates a really interesting pattern on those. Unintentional, uh, but still visually appealing. So very pleased to have gotten both of those. Let's go ahead and we're gonna do another curveball. Up next, we have got some vintage Barbies. Now, this one, it is a PJ Barbie. Um, the head mold on this is the Steffi mold. This is date night PJ. Now she is missing her shoes. She is missing her ring, though she does still have her earrings. Her hair is a little messy, but really not that bad. She's retained a lot of her original curl. Um, the interesting thing about this, again, the toys I think are amazing. Um, the dress is meant to kind of you can wrap it up however you want to and create ooh girl you can create your own dress out of it and it just is meant to wrap around so she can do something like that we could probably do a one shoulder is that how she was and i'm just doing it on the opposite shoulder can't fully remember do some, I mean, so 80s, but um, of course, Barbie does have date night. She's about to lose her halter top there. And the blue yarn with the blue sequins on there. I forget something kissing um, PJ on this, but again, it is the Steffi mold. So the character, like Barbie, this is called a PJ. But the, the head mold on this one is called the Steffi mold. You see the different skin tones on it, but you see those pursed lips, right? She's a rather easy one to identify now. She does have some discoloration down here on her legs, but she does both do have those click legs. I think that a lot of kids grew up, oh gosh, we don't want to do it like that. Um, you know what? I could probably take this ring and give it to her. That way she could have the ring. I think we might go ahead and do that. But great value, especially on date night. Even her, the clothes aren't original, but the doll herself, hair needs to be fixed up. Um, but again, great value on those vintage Barbie dolls. Pink box, a lot of times, or what you want to go for. It's all about the 70s and the 80s. Okay, a different kind of toy. This is from Aero Rubber. They are the actual manufacturers. However, they are copyrighted as Edward Mobley. Um, and the reason is that Aero, Aero Plastics partnered with Edward Mobley and these squeaks were based on art illustrations by Edward Mobley. So sometimes you'll find the Ruth E. Newton ones. Um, the difference being that Ruth E. Newton was a different child's illustrator. Uh, those squeaks were based on her illustrations. Edward Mobley is based on his. Uh, one of the biggest, even if you don't, you know, this one is stamped on the bottom of her foot. Most of them are, of course, stamped somewhere on the squeaker. But the easiest tell is that the Edward Mobley ones have a tendency to have more intricate sculpts, whereas the Ruth E. Newton ones are a little bit softer. The eyes, there is, um, it's not a huge difference, but the Mobleys have a tendency to have the whites, the light hits, circular, where the Ruth E. Newton ones have a tendency to be triangular. So that those are easy tells, but again, you can see more sculptural detailing 
especially in the in the dress. Now the hair I would call kind of even steven between the two of those because while the overall clothing detailing on the um, Ruthie Newtons are softer, the hair uh, on both have a tendency to be very intricate. Uh, but I love her little flower crown, of course, and her pink dress. She is holding on to her little rag doll there. It kind of looks like Humpty Dumpty. Either way, I feel like it's getting choked out one way or the other. <laughs> All right, we do have some more milk glass, but this one is not by Fenton. It is, in fact, from Westmoreland. Now, tr overall, Westmoreland milk glass has a tendency to be far more denser, um, more weightier than a lot of the Fenton milk glass. We do, of course, have our hand painted candy dish and it's obviously in a pedestal form. They did make this in two, perhaps three sizes, but it was part of a full line. There are no chips or cracks on this one. This is obviously the larger of the shape. We have the, pur the purple or a lavender bows running around the perimeter of it. I love this piece. Again, it's super traditional, um, but those milk glass gardens is what I call them. You had a variety, uh, Fenton, Charlatan, Westmoreland, a lot of them very popular in 70s and 80s, did a lot of floral hand painting, kind of like your Victorian revival, which was very popular during that time period. Um, the strawberries aren't the best example of it, but you know it gives you kind of like an idea of what you can do with those just to make up, mix up the different manufacturers, um, you know, the opalescence with the milk glasses, or if you just stick with one, like the milk glasses with all of the floral painting on it, I think is a beautiful collection. Um, or you can mix it up, of course, with just like your unpainted milk glass, right? Either or works. Alrighty, we do have some more Fenton. However, these ones are really cute. They are the birthday bears. Now, I love finding these um, nine out of 10 times. I find the clear glass ones with their different birthstones. Of course, in the heart, they all have the exact same sculpt. However, I have actually never found these amethyst or lavender colored glass ones. Um, you can see like this one with like the peridot, I believe. This one is a little, has got a little bit more color density to our blue stone one. Um, we have two more, like the diamond one, if you will. Okay, and then last but not least, we do have the pink one. So whether you keep these because it's your birthstone, maybe you give it as a gift to somebody, I think giving vintage and antiques is a great idea. Um, it's definitely sustainable shopping, and you know, all of the kids these days are all about it. Um, or you just do a collection of them and just have a little, little uh, Fenton or Rainbow Bear uh, collection. I think they're super cute. They go in well, um, especially with your milk glasses. When we think about, let's pull up that Westmoreland, especially with that lavender little ribbon on it. Isn't that great? I love it. Perhaps, I don't know how I'm going to feel about it with the Empoli um, Apothecary. We'll see. I mean, why not? Mix up. Mix it up. I think they're absolutely charming. Again, whether you keep it for yourself, your personal collection, a birthday gift to yourself or to somebody else, I love them. The sculpt is absolutely adorable, too. I'm still rolling. Okay, we've got two children's books in here. I bought both of them. These are printed in Italy, if I'm, okay. It says printed and made in Italy and published by the Harville Press um, out of, on Belgrave Street, London, SWI, on shore. They were five shillings, okay? They were each five shillings. Where am I at right here? So the first is the lorry driver, but it's really weird. So, you know, we have, like, see how big this is? It progressively gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller 
as he kind of goes down to different vehicles, I'm assuming this is model mark five, then he gets to four where he begins to walk. He's getting closer and closer and bam, we're right back up where he arrives at his destination. So there is some foxing, i.e. there is discoloration that you're seeing here. Um, not ideal, but certainly not unexpected. The other book, What I'd Like to Be, oh my gosh, this one is so precious. So we've got our little elephant here. And for example, the elephant says, or it reads, the elephant is bored with being a big, heavy animal. He's dreaming. What do you think he is dreaming about? Well, let's find out. He dreams he is a little bird who can fly and sing. It's all about these elephants dreaming about being other things. The bird. The little bird is bored with flying and singing. He is dreaming. What is he dreaming about? He dreams he is a fish and he can swim underwater. Well, guess what the next animal is? A fish who then dreams of being a lizard, who then dreams of being a cow or a bull, and guess who the bull dreams of being, because this is our last page. An elephant. It just goes to show you, it's all a circle of life one way or the other, right? These are really cute. I've never heard of the Harville Press, but hey, why not? I love the subject matter. It's got great, like, mid-60s illustrations, but I don't have a price on them. Oh, you know what I didn't realize? I got to this last page, and then you open it, and what's inside the package are all of these different toys. Surprise, even to me. Alrighty, we've got more glass for you. This is in a gorgeous ruby red glass and it is from one of the pillars of the mid-century glass it is our gorgeous viking candy dish do you see that beauty look at the finial up here at the top it's giving me kind of like fleur-de-lis vibes i mean it's not but it does remind me of that in their simplicity do you see the color density on that piece i just think that is an absolute stunner um, I do see up here in the natural light, it's giving us a little bit of an Amberina vibe. I don't see that in real life. Let me... Yeah, you don't um, pick up the fluoresce. I will say where this is applied, this finial appears to be applied, I do see a little bit of a fluoresce in there. Otherwise, it seems that the jar itself is all one piece. The lid does have that applied finial at the top, but the finial itself is a molded piece of glass. This color is stunning. I've never found this shape before, so I was really pleased to find this one. Um, while it is a mid-century piece of glass, in my opinion, a lot of mid-century design is a throwback to kind of like the Art Deco era. Um, and it's interesting because, oh, well, let me get into it. So. Mid-century, you know, you had the Art Deco. It was very angular, you know, coming out of the Art Nouveau movement. It was more about clean, angular lines. Kind of fell out of favor, right? Then we enter into mid-century. There were more ornate things. It was brightly colored. But then we go into, um, like, the mid-century. We're talking 60s, 70s, more of the mod. And we see a throwback to the Art Deco era. However, the color palette has changed. So you would see a lot of blacks, a lot of deep jewel tones. Um, while you could argue this red is a jewel tone, you would see it in ambers and olive greens. Um, and then flash forward to like the 80s, you see a mid-century revival that is actually an Art Deco revival, but the color palette has changed once again. And we're into like the pinks, the dusty pinks, the powdery blues, the yellows, yet, they would all, if you had one piece from each of those different uh, um, decades, if the color palette was the same, you'd swear it was all from the same, but it's not. So I just think that's really interesting. And the color is just oof, in the natural. I mean, look at it. It's 
keep it's, it's candy apple realness, y'all. Don't you want to eat it? Don't eat your glass. All right, we're going to move on to a piece of metal, which we haven't done yet. Now, if you were watching my videos, it was like four weeks. Oh, I actually have it. Hold on. Okay, so yeah, about four weeks ago, I found this particular piece, and it's, you know, in its little box here. It's old colonial pewter. It's a reproduction piece, um, but I still fell in love with it. It is this little mercury glass. Um, it's a pocket perfume, right? Um, it is paper thin, and I dropped it, and I broke it, but the dauber is still in there. So you do have that mercury glass dauber, but I had broken it. I was crestfallen. I'm really still, I this piece will haunt me. I have kept it. I don't have the heart to throw it out, but there that is. This time though, I found a different one and it is a brass one with like a faux lizard skin to it. Look at that. This one we just unscrew and boys and girls, the dauber is still intact. You drop this one, it doesn't matter. Now you think with the old pewter house one, the glass probably would have been much thicker to kind of hold up to being in somebody's pocket. That one, it was just, it was made for looks, but this one, oh, I'm pleased, I don't. I don't smell anything, which I guess might be a good thing. But isn't that cool? It's got some patina, but gosh darn it. I think it's pretty excellent. Definitely was pleased to find that one. And of course, the first thing that popped into my head was the one that I broke. Okay, we are down to our last few pieces. And this one, it is upside down. We've got Made in England. It is the Harmony Kingdom. This is a larger piece. If you're not familiar, Harmony Kingdom, they are like cast resin, though vintage. Um, I love them. The sculpts on these, you know, as I was saying earlier, with the Royal Copley, the budgie, like soft sculpt, exception to the rule. Harmony Kingdom does absolutely amazingly intricate sculptural detailing on their pieces, which is what I love about them. This one's a little bit more simple. A lot of times you've got a lot of different animals all crammed together in a very small space. However, on this one, we've got like our little lemur here. He's climbing up on the side of the dish. He is perfectly detailed. Okay, monkey tracks going around. Look, that lead up to here. He's got his little leaf with bananas on there. And then when we open it, as is the case with most Harmony Kingdom, there awaits a little sculptural surprise on the interior. This one happens to be a leaf or a branch with more leaves on it, which is a little simple for them because sometimes you open them and you're like, what does that have to do with anything? But who knows? Y'all, we got not just one, but check it out. I was able to get two of the same one because who wouldn't need two? But seriously, I think these are so hilarious. What you looking at? You can't take my bananas. My banana. Alrighty, so we saw the sewing bag from earlier. This time I've got one piece. The thing that has proven to be the most popular in those vintage sewing notion bags are the tools. Most specifically has been the pinking shears. So the fact that I actually found in its, pardon me, in its original packaging, the pinking shears, look at that. These things are beastie too. Like it's easy to see like, Cutty, cutty. So I was pretty cool about that. And you can see like the pinking, I didn't, it wasn't these scissors. I know I won't cut paper with them. I can pe hear people shouting at me. These are just for cloth. They are from patent pending. They're made in the US of A, but it's not giving me a specific manufacturer. So I was pretty excited to find those. 
for somebody out there. <clears throat> like I said, the thing that was brought to my attention that was popular were the pinking shears. Um, and you can definitely tell by the way they were definitely high quality. Alrighty, truth be told, I have saved, I think, aside from the playing cards, my most very favorite pieces for the last. Now, we do have some green cobalt um, carnival glass. Look at how dense that carnival... Now, listen, it's the great pattern, which is relatively common, but the execution of this piece, I mean, it almost looks like it is gold-plated. It is not. It's our carnival glass effect, three-footed bowl. I just fell in love with how absolutely dense that gold carnival glass... Oh, my gosh. It's creating a mirrored effect. You do pick up more of the iridescence, the color shift on the interior, but here on the exterior, it is all about that gold. You, know, you do pick up some more colorways here on the feet. Not a lot, but it is there. Look at that piece. I love it. It is so beautiful. Oh, all right. Let's see what else we got. Okay, this piece is really unusual. It is definitely a smaller treasure, but how about this little celluloid address book here? Do you see that? It is wholly intact. The fact that we've got, it looks like a half doll here, our Victorian lady in our dress. Even the flowers are intact, but we open it up. The pages are there. Not all of them have been filled out, but a good bit have been filled out with different names, phone numbers, addresses. It really is like a peek back in history and I absolutely love that. Uh, I just find these pieces to be absolutely fantastic, fascinating. Um, it's kind of like ephemera, ephemera adjacent. I mean, is it ephemera? Because it's a plastic, but technically it's a book. Question of the ages, you'll have to let me know. Is it ephemera or is it not? But it's so cute. Look at that. It's tiny and cute. Okay, speaking of tiny, let's do these. <clears throat> I found some gorgeous Victorian era jewelry. I don't know how I'm going to handle it. Um, so we're going to see. The first up is this beautiful pendant. Now I don't have the chain, I just have the pendant. Oh, you know what? Let me go ahead and use my black backdrop on this one. We'll try our best without the pendant. Um, let me see here, I'll probably just do it as such. But look at that. Now it is a cut glass, um, pardon me, faceted glass to mimic that of what would I would think would be an emerald. Do you see that brass filigree work around there? We do have the braided wire. It is so delicate. It is in such good condition. Let me show you here the back. I'll just sit on my lap. Look at the color on that. I mean, again, it is a faceted glass, so um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to pick it up. I'm not getting direct, direct light at this point, but you do get that green coming in behind it. Is that not beautiful? With the appropriate chain, oh, that is sick. I love, love this piece. Isn't that beautiful? It doesn't fluoresce. This one does not fluoresce. Okay, let's do some more Victorian jewelry, y'all. This is a wedding cuff. All right, we've got this gorgeous... Um, Richard, let me know, it is silver plated on top of copper. This one, you can see a little bit of it is coming off on the bottom. I did get two, I have been wearing one, not gonna lie, but look at the detail work on those. It has a spade, which is to represent good luck, good fortune. Um, it is a red amethyst on the inside, so semi-precious. But isn't that beautiful? We've got the twisted wire again. Um, it is, oh, what do you call it? What do you call this kind of a bracelet, y'all? Not just a Victorian wedding cuff, but um, when it can pull apart. So these predate the popularity or the rise 
of the wedding band, which really didn't start to come into fashion until 1907. And at that point in 1907, clearly, you know, buying um, an engagement ring was only for the very wealthy. So these were an indication that a woman would be married or was spoken for. Um, as I said, I do have two. The other one that I have, which is upstairs, you are seeing more rubbing on it. And one of the little amethysts, there is, it's incredibly difficult to see because of how small they are, but there is a small chip to the stone. So I'm probably going to keep the one and I will, you know, more than likely sell the other. But is that not phenomenal or what? Doesn't it look like it would be a haunted piece of jewelry? I've been wearing it for the past couple of days and I'm still feeling pretty good. I don't feel the weird presence of anything. So I would assume if somebody would be interested, they would be safe. But is that not fabulous or what? I love this. Love, love, love it. Okay, in here, believe it or not, while the box itself obviously isn't from the Victorian era, what is inside is we do have four. Um, this is glass. They are beads, uh, more than likely um, morning jewelry. So we have two. You can see on the side here there's holes uh, I would assume it's probably a bracelet you know they are flat backed you can tell it's a molded though crudely molded molded piece of glass so we have two of the larger ish ones and then we do have two of the smaller ones isn't that fabulous you know a woman in mourning through the loss typically of a spouse or unfortunately of a child, she would by societal standards be required to wear all black, including her jewelry for a set period of time to show good form. Uh, so you can see here the two different sizes. The one of the larger did appear, as I saw it on camera, yeah. Hmm. I don't know if it's a nick or if it was an air bubble through casting. You see this one over here on her cheek and then right up here at the top of her hair. But still absolutely amazing, really unique piece. Glad, glad to be able to rescue these. So that was, that, that was a thrill of a find. Now, our next piece was definitely a thrill of a find. Okay, are you ready? I don't, I've never had this, this nice a piece of jewelry. So it is our Victorian era. Do you see we have, it is copper. Okay, there is some patina here to the band. We're thinking about polishing it. I, I think I might, but gorgeous kind of art deco-y, pre-art deco-y vibe to it. Do you see those again? Uh, cut glass, faceted glass. Look at that pendant. And you do have the white seed beads going around it. The gorgeous scroll work. Is that not beautiful or what? You know, when we turn it here to the back, you can see that it's fully faceted and it does give you some absolutely beautiful light refraction on the piece. I did, in fact, try this on. Um, it is totally an absolutely wearable piece of jewelry. Again, you can see kind of over here, there is some oxidization to the copper, but is that not gorgeous or what? Now, this one is in fact a uranium glass. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get it to glow for you. You're just gonna see the purple, um, but this is a uranium glass. I don't wonder why that is. Like you can see it in real life, but then on camera, it just gives you like full purple glow. But it is in fact uranium glass. We've got what, five pieces of it. Is that not beautiful or what? Let's move that a little bit forward here so you can see that against the skin. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, just to display it like that and maybe like if you had, if you were a jewelry collector to get some coordinating pieces of the same era, I just, I don't know, like if you had something like this, couple of different chains, you know, obviously it would allow 
for additional chains, putting it in the cloche and calling it a day. <gasps> uh, I am so thrilled with this find. I don't know. This is a hard one. This is a really hard one to let go of, but yeah. Alrighty guys, our last item is a little befuddling. So it is a lamp, it is heavy. It is our dragonfly lady with a marble uh, base on her. She is fully functional. I got her for a song of $48. Now it is the, it is, I'm, I may mispronounce it, but it's Meida, M-E-Y-D-A, Tiffany. Now it's a little misleading because Meida, original founder, his last name is Cohen. And he was an artisan at the time Louis Comfort Tiffany was doing his stained glass. So Meida Tiffany is Meida Cohen producing glass in the style of Tim Tiffany. As it was originally a hobbyist kind of thing for him, but as it gained popularity and people recognized the quality of his work, um, he kind of created his own glass manufacturing, which is in Yorkville, New York, which is still producing, um, made a glass company, and they do do Tiffany glass reproductions. This is not a, a Tiffany reproduction. This is a made a Tiffany original. And Richard has another original. It is the butterfly nymph where she's kind of cowering over and the lamp, but stained glass comes up and creates a butterfly look to her, but it is absolutely beautiful. So the fact that we have two um, is pretty amazing. They do do a variety of different insects. There is a different kind of butterfly. So if you ever see them out and about, definitely snatch them up, um, especially if you can find them. It's a beautifully crafted lamp. Um, I will say that I wish that there was like a drop here on this, but it is what it is. So, but that is it today, you guys. That is our haul. I hope that you do, you guys did enjoy it. There was a wide variety of items for sure. I'm sure it's a longer video. I appreciate you hanging out with me this long. Um, I think uh, we got some beautiful stuff. I'm excited to hear what you have to say down in the comments below. If you've made it this far and you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. I would appreciate it. And as always, until next time, remember, keep it rusty, crusty, and dusty. Bye, guys.